Oh, hello. <clears throat> it's Saturday, 24th September 2016. 2.43 uh, p.m. I'm put coconut oil in my hair, which I do on Saturdays. Uh, I don't know, my face looks a little bit fat. But, uh, no. <sighs> <Oof>. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, uh, I got up kind of sort of a bit late ish. Mm, uh, but you know, did all of my morning routine and uh, all of that. Ugh, the moods go up and down so quickly. I was feeling really good like about an hour ago. <laughs> oh my God. I feel down. Uh, so I'm making the video. Mm. <sighs> so I will be going to see the movie tomorrow. What's it called? Major. I guess it's about this trans women activist. It's supposed to be good. So, yeah, I'll be going tomorrow, I'll meet my friend at the town hall in the center of the city. And the cinema is just close by, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a bit tired. <sighs> Uh, I think I'm going to start applying for jobs next week. On Monday. Uh, um, better focus on that. I also need to register for that bar exam thing. Uh, it's like $750. Oh my god, what is this? They want your money. They want your money. Uh, uh, why does it cost that much? Oh. I don't know. I feel like my face looks. Ugh. It's like. Eh? Oh. It's the hair. It's just. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um. I was seeing this uh, talk about art and AIDS and uh, I think it's a, uh, I don't know, I mean this this whole um, AIDS is like a, it's a horrible disease. Uh, the thing I, for the, one of the reasons I tend to I think it's important for me uh, is like because in the LGBT community, trans community, trans women, because a lot of them do sex work to you know, so they get you know, a large proportion of the LGBT community is affected by this terrible illness. Um, it's the social stigma, I think they've got the medical stuff fairly. Well, it's, it would be good to have a complete cure, but the biggest problem with this illness is this social stigma. It's like incredibly bad. And on a personal note, like uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, 14 or something, um, this was back in the United Arab Emirates. Um, I had this friend at uh, school and he, he used to like always make jokes and I, I, would, I would laugh at his jokes, that's what I do, I tend to laugh at people's jokes. And we were like really, you know, we have, you know, you know I, that's, that's, that's the name, that was the basis of our friendship was he makes jokes. Actually he was kind of like teasing people all the time, it was really not that funny. Looking back on it, that was not really that funny. But, um, ugh, so yeah, bad, bad on me. Uh, bad on us for doing that. Um, 
But one day he came and told me like, oh, I've got, I've got AIDS or something. And I'm like, what? I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Like, and, and I don't know. And he, he said something like, well, you know, I, I had sex with this Filipino woman and you know how in, in, in the United Arab Emirates there are all these domestic workers and there's exploitation, which is another problem. Um, well, that's a different topic. Um, but anyway, he says, like, I had a sex with a Filipino maid and, and now I have HIV or AIDS. And I'm like, I don't know whether to believe him, whether this guy was just making this shit up because, you know, he used to tell a lot of jokes. But so I don't know whether to believe this guy. But... I was like, ah, oh, come on, you're just joking, you're just joking. And so, but then over the coming few days, he'd never took it back. And um, so he, then he, he was, he seemed to be quite serious about it. Uh, so I was like, holy shit. Um, and now what I am ashamed of is like, after I found out that, that this, you know, he, he told me this, uh, I could see myself like withdrawing from him. I don't want to be around him because I was like afraid I, I don't want to get that disease. So like and I feel very really guilty about it even to this day I still think about that. And uh, that's just you know shows me like how the social stigma surrounding this illness is just and I could see the, the expression on his face, like he knew exactly, like he knew like what I was thinking or the fact that I was pulling away, the fact that I, did, I felt uncomfortable hanging around him. He, I could see it in his face, but he never told anything. He never said anything to me. We never really talked about it much um, after that. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, so on a personal note, like I... I feel very bad, very guilty about that, and it just, it's just... Uh, it's a horrible illness, and, uh, you know, there have been other occasions. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Anyway, I don't want to go too much into anything. The thing is, like, um, if someone has this illness, outing them is like a... You, you don't want to out people. I, mean, I, I will, Someone can really... It's like... It's like uh, it's not as bad now as... But like in the past, I guess if someone was gay... Like, and you told the whole... Other people, oh, this person is gay. And then some people have killed themselves because of the culture, the, the society doesn't accept them. I feel like if you're... Uh, you know, if you have this uh, HIV or whatever... That state, that status is like a you should you shouldn't out people if you know or if you suspect someone has or what. But the thing is, yeah, it is a it is a thing you have to consider. Like outing people can, uh, it's 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 bullying. It's a form of bullying. It's it's a, you know, it can have terrible consequences. Same with being trans as well. I think I've heard of like this trans woman who was like this. Like she was interviewed on this, uh, like like she was living in stealth, like no one knew she was trans. But then this guy from some golf thing, uh, he was writing for a golf magazine, and then uh, he outed her. Uh, yeah, he interviewed her, but I think she was writing some. Anyway, anyway, so she she killed herself after that article came out where this guy, um, this reporter, uh, outed this transgender woman. Uh, oh yeah, it's in Grantland. It's uh, yeah, it says uh, the Grantland apologizes for article that outed transgender golf inventor. I'll link this article. Yeah, it's a sports website. And I think she killed herself after that. So the thing about, you know, you, you have to be really careful. She didn't out people and... Um, yeah, and the, the social stigma, even for like being trans, this social stigma, it's getting better. 
but depending on where you are, I mean, if you're working and you, let's say you pass really well, and then, you know, there can, there can be all these negative things, so. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, this, you know, this people really, there's a lot of stigma around AIDS, HIV, and you know, so horrible, this social stigma. So I'll link to that uh, video I saw. How AIDS changed American art. He was talking about like how in the the art, it's the institution wouldn't they didn't want to showcase uh, uh, queer art about AIDS and how uh, artists use camouflaging techniques to get over that censorship. That's a good topic on censorship as well. Like if you how do you combat censorship? Like like if you're like in uh, Soviet Russia, and how do you combat? Uh, there was this, I think, Krzysztof, Krzysztof Kozlowski was this uh, uh, Polish director. He talked about that how when uh, Poland was under communist rule, the filmmakers used to get around the censorship by cleverly coding their messages so that people understood what was being communicated, but it wouldn't be so obvious that it would get censored. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel a bit better now. <laughs> talking, talking, yeah.